Lloyds are concentrating on the, let's say, call it confusion over the number of migrant workers here in the UK. The migrant jobs fiasco is a headline in the Mail. The Sun, uh, less generous. Migrants Labour haven't a clue. Well, they are the government that pledged uh, British jobs for British workers, but that's been seriously undermined with the news that uh, more than half of the new jobs created since 1997 have gone to foreign workers. Earlier this week, the Work and Pensions Secretary, Peter Hayne, said 2.7 million jobs have been created under Labour. And of them, only 800,000 had gone to migrants. But then Mr Hayne revised the figure to 1.1 million. Then, a figure from the government's own Office of National Statistics, but it even higher at one and a half million. Well, joined now by the Shadow Work and Pension Secretary, Chris Grayling, and the Employment Minister, Caroline Flint. Good to see you both. Thanks for getting up to talk to us. Caroline, a usually embarrassing episode uh, for the government, and something that looks like uh, a cover-up that went wrong, was it? It certainly wasn't a cover-up. The uh, original figure of 800,000, which is foreign nationals who've come into new jobs since 1997, was, we found, to be incorrect. And as soon as we discovered that, we wanted to have a look at the statistics, make sure we got it right. And that's why we came to the 1.1 million, which we were very upfront about. I have to say, what is, is confusing about this is when you get figures that aren't representative. So the 1.5 million does include foreign nationals, but it also includes people who were born abroad, but actually are UK nationals. And I think, you know, it's really important in this debate, because I know it raises issues for people, but it's very important that when we're using t t statistics, yeah. we're talking about the same people, and 1.5 million it's just isn't the same you, you about the get one them right. Uh, well, no, we uh, did so it's a good old-fashioned cock-up, nothing more. Well, uh, yes, it's a statistical mistake, but the reason it matters is that the, the wave of people who've come into the country in the last few years to work here are creating big problems in the area of housing, for public services, for local authorities who are trying to plan what they do locally. Uh, they get money based on the number of people who are supposed to be in their areas. If ministers don't really know how many people are here, and there are still even doubts about the figures we know now. They don't include, for example, people in temporary accommodation, people who have only recently arrived in the UK, and Labour's own Frank Field is now saying the figure could be as high they as 1.6 million. said these are based on t uh, 2003, they're, uh, they're out of date. Let's Say the figures for a minute. Let's mm. just put the point you made by the Sun front pages, Morning Cry. The fact of the matter is, you haven't the faintest idea how many migrant workers there are in this country because there's probably hundreds now in Peterborough, Slough, Oldham, Barnley, all over the place. You haven't a clue who are here. Well, we do have the statistics which help us make those estimates. And I have to say, they're the same basis that we, of statistics were used under previous Conservative governments as well. We are also introducing uh, uh, ID cards for foreign nationals from next year's. We are going to be counting people in and counting that, and including for those who come on the workers' permits, setting a but limit. As of now, I'm sorry, talking about that. As of now, you must admit, you don't know how many migrant workers there are in this country. What you could not reliably, honestly, put your hand on your heart what, and tell me. What we do know, John, is that 29.1 million people are in work in this country. We're not dealing with the mass unemployment of the 80s and 90s, where over 3 million were unemployed. We do know that there are less people on benefits, and those figures are coming down. And for the first time in 20 years, the figures for people on incapacity benefit are coming down. And yes, migrant workers have come into this country. I met a Polish worker downstairs who's working on your reception, who is, who is with a partner who is British. And they are contributing to our workforce alongside sure. British people and who are in record numbers of jobs. And despite the problems you outline, which I think are accepted by government, they are causing strains in certain areas. You have to accept, Chris, that overall, these migrant workers are good news for the British economy. There's no doubt about that. We, we, we have never suggested anything but that migrant workers, that people coming into the UK have made a positive contribution. But it doesn't but sound the, like the, it, Chris, the, the, in the, the way you, well, you the, misrepresent the, some of the figures and you aren't, when you use the figures, you're not talking about the same people. And I think Caroline, that is I'm dangerous. I'm not misrepresenting anything. We've I had accused of ministers lining up this week to apologise for the fact that they've put the wrong figures before us. But that the hard reality is we have higher youth unemployment in this country than we did 10 years ago. Uh, we have 1.2 million people no, um, between workers. 16 because and 24 who are not in Work. Work. We need to focus on getting those young people back into work. Uh, and you know, if we did that, we would not need uh, to have such an influx of migrant workers into the UK. One, one other point, and this is a, a, another. It's a, a, a very dangerous issue when you start mixing up different issues around unemployment and you connect migrant workers to issues about young people. The number of young people who are long-term unemployed has gone down dramatically. Yes, we need to do more about those 16 and 17 year olds who are coming out of school without qualifications and that's something we're addressing. But don't mix up these issues because okay. it's Let's very just come dangerous. back to the issue we're discussing this morning, which or the headline issue we're discussing this morning. And, and another problem I, I, I suggest you've created for yourselves. British jobs for British workers, apart from the fact that it, it is clearly 
are nonsense. It's illegal. You can't do that. You can't discriminate in that way under EU law. Well, so it's nonsense for Gordon Brown to say we're creating British jobs. British work. You can't do it. Well, there's 660,000 vacancies out there in the UK today. We have signed up over the summer over 100 employers who have signed local employment partnerships with us. And what they're going to do, John, is work with our job centres to support people who are currently on benefits into work. That is what we mean by providing the opportunity to work for, uh, for British people. Okay. And that's one of the ways we can fill the vacancies Just and very, still very have briefly. In migrant fairness, do you workers paying a contribution. Do you accept I, I accept the government's doing things and I'd be uh, horrified if they weren't but they've been in power for 10 years these are problems that are here today have 3 million people unemployed as we did under the Tories. We, we have 5 million people are stranded on benefits uh, no they are people with disabilities they are students so again you're mixing up the information I'm afraid Chris which doesn't help in the terms of your uh, leader having a sensible debate there we go I regret to say it's a fascinating debate love to know what uh, people at home uh, think uh, about it all thank you both very much Steve, for thank coming to talk to us this morning thank you Chris time is quarter to seven Doctor